while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Lord, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to bring this word before you, Lord God. This word of yours to bring before the people in this house, Lord. And we pray that you will guide the word to where you want it to go. And you'll cause it to have the effect that you want it to, call it to have in Jesus' name. Amen. So the pastor says, what's wrong, Bubba? And Bubba says, I need you to pray for my hearing. So the pastor put his hands on Bubba's ears and prayed. And when he was done, he said, so how's your hearing? And Bubba said, I don't know. It isn't until next Tuesday. <laughs> I wish I'd have brought my umbrella, he said in downpour. Too late? It's too late now. I wish I hadn't eaten the whole thing. Too late? Too late now. I wish I'd gone to the bathroom before leaving the house. Too late? Too late now. I wish I'd been more careful at the table saw. <laughs> too late? It's too late now. I have been known to leave the house and go preach somewhere without my teeth. It's too late. Sometimes I get halfway around the block. The last time I remembered, I don't have my teeth in. So it wasn't too late. <laughs> but sometimes uh, the things we want to do or, or, or should have done or wish we'd have done, it's too late. Matthew 25, first 13 verses. Jim, you're, familiar, you're very familiar with, with, these, uh, with this uh, parable, I'm sure. It says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like the ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And it starts out at that, at that time. I like to focus on that. Five of them were foolish and were wise. And five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Jan, you can come. You can come down. <laughs> Later, the others came also. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. For the five foolish virgins, it was too late. Too late now. Sometimes it's too late to control your tongue. I wish I, hadn't, wish I hadn't said that. Now I have a sore face. <laughs> wish I hadn't said that. Now I have a fat lip. Wish I hadn't said that. Now I have an enemy where I used to have a friend. A slip of the tongue can change your friend into an enemy. I wish I hadn't said that. I've caused harm with my words. We do this to people that we love. In the heat of anger, we speak without thinking. Our children should never hear the words, you're worthless or you'll never amount to anything. Those words stay with them forever. And sometimes they believe it. Parents should never ever say those kind of things. 
I should have said something. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's what you should not have said that you did say. Sometimes you should have said something. But you can cause harm by what you say. You can have regrets about what you failed to say. About what you failed to say. The words that you didn't speak. You can have regrets about that. Talking about words, the pastor asked his flock, what, what would you like people to say when you're in your casket? And one congregant said, I'd like them to say I was a fine family man. Another says, I'd like them to say I helped people. And a third one responded, I'd like them to say, look, I think he's moving. <laughs> James 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 8, But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. The product of the tongue, words, are not always benign. That's what that means. They're full of deadly poison. You have to consider the effect of our words before it's too late. That's the title of this sermon, Too Late. Proverbs 15.1 A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Just words. Proverbs 15.4 The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. The tongue is so harmful, potentially, but is also helpful. People came to Jesus just to hear his words. Crowds thronged around just to hear him speak. And to Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again. Powerful words. Matthew 11 28 to 30, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Those are beautiful, comforting words. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus always spoke to heal and to guide. He never spoke to harm. He never spoke a regrettable word. We probably all can say, I've spoke a regrettable word. We probably all can say that in the heat of a moment, we blurted something out that we shouldn't have. We could probably all say that. But we need to practice thinking about the words before speaking. Instead of just blurting out an emotional response, think about the effect of what we say. Amen? Amen. Too late to control your actions. We're talking about words, now we're talking about actions. In other words, think about what you're doing before you do it. Oops. That's a word you should never say because it means you, it means you did something, a mistake. You did it rashly. I can remember going hunting with my wife's dad. He was a great bird shooter. He was a great bird hunter. He had he had bird dogs, and uh, I think two of my sons were there with us. And and um, we went. We took a break for lunch, and then after lunch, we went back to the hunt. A bird flushed, and he pulled up his shotgun, and it went click instead of boom. He forgot to reload the shotgun after we ate lunch. Oops! Too late now. Wish I woulda, probably coulda, maybe shoulda, maybe next time too late. All that's left is regrets. I'm sure you've had regrets about things that you could have done or should have done but, but didn't do. We all do that. After the bride and groom say I do and I pronounce you husband and wife it's too late. 
<laughs> too late now. You're in this and you're going to stay in it, I hope. I've done five weddings. They're all together so far. There's three things you need to be married in Pennsylvania. You need a license. You need a statement of intent. That's the vows. And you need an officiant that pronounces a, a pronouncement. And so those are the, those are the three things. But uh, too late now. If you know, if you if once you're in this, you're in this. Some people have regrets. That's a shame. They should have thought about that before they did it. Abraham went down to Egypt during a drought. Genesis chapter 12. He wasn't supposed to go there. He wasn't supposed to go to Egypt. He was supposed to go to the land of Canaan, the land that God said, I will show you the land where you will go. But he had his own idea. He got into his own idea and he got into a lot of trouble and the Pharaoh kicked him out of Egypt. God had a specific word to him about where he was to go. God is our guide. If we don't do that, too late, too late. His word is our all-sufficient rule for faith and practice. Any behavior condemned by the word is condemned by God. And there are behaviors that are common and prevalent in our society that are condemned in the word and therefore they are condemned by God. Many times a question about what we should do is answered through prayer. The still, small voice. If we, wait for, if we wait for God's guidance, we're not going to have to say, too late. Too late now. The Holy Spirit prompts us all the time. It's too late when you're dead. I've seen a lot of dead people in caskets. I put some of them in there myself. My dad was a funeral director and I used to help my dad. We carried them up the steps from where the, his operating room was, up the steps and put them in the casket. And I used to help him do that. It was like carrying a log. They were all stiff, you know. But I've seen a lot of people in caskets. When you're in the casket, it's too late. Too late now. Whatever you're hoping to still do after death, it's too late. When death separates you from this world and you're ushered into eternity, then it's too late. Once the doctor says the time of death is, it's too late. Too late to affect the destiny of your soul. Hebrews 9, 27, people are destined to die once and after that face judgment. There is no such thing as purgatory. That's, that's, that's a myth and it's a lie and it doesn't, have, it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as purgatory. There are second chances while you're living. But after death, it's too late. Too late now. Maybe your enemy will say that. I'm talking about us because we're in heaven and maybe the enemy will say too late now I can't get him anymore <laughs> he's with God it's too late for the enemy or the enemy maybe has won and you will say too late too late now I have visited people on their deathbed days from their demise. I'm talking about sinners. When I go in to visit somebody like that, I tell them, you probably aren't going to survive this. I'm here to get you ready to meet God. I haven't had anybody in that condition say no thanks. But if I did, it would soon be too late. 
Will God say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord, or will it be, depart from me? I never knew you. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Either way, after our demise, it's too late. If we're in heaven, it's too late for the enemy. That'd be a happy thing. If we're not, it's too late for, right, for you. That's not such a happy thing. Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. See, it says, while he may be found. While he may be found. Seek the Lord. Or it may be too late. Joel chapter 2. Even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Rend means tear. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. He doesn't want it to be too late for you. He wants you in there. He wants you to repent while you can. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, For he says, In the time of my favor I heard you. In the time of my favor. And then the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. People have an opportunity to turn toward God when the Holy Spirit entices them to do that. Some of them sin away that precious moment. Some of them do. Turn their backs on God and stay that way. Either preparation was made or not. What, it, what preparation? Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Either you are or it's too late. There's no purgatory. It's appointed us once to die and then judgment. God made a way for us to be saved. If we go into eternity rejecting that way, it will be too late. And the way is, and I'm, and I'm telling you this because I know that you're all born again believers in here. But I'm telling you this to help you to be able to bring someone out of the darkness into the light. That's why I'm telling you this. John 14, 6. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You can't get there through Scientology. You can't get there through Buddha. You can't get there through yoga. Only through Jesus can you get to the Father. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I'm telling you this so you'll be prepared to lead someone to the Lord. Romans 3.23, then Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. John 3.16, I use this sequence. And I know some people use a Roman road. This is just the, what I use. John 3.16, you all know that one. And John 1.12, this is the clincher. 
Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. When you become a child of God, that is when you are born again. That is the, that is the clincher after you explain that we're all sinners and that the wages of sin is death, but God has a gift of eternal life. This is how you move from sin to eternal life before it's too late. And you need to be armed and prepared to help people to see that. Because that's, that's our job, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. So I know all of you are ready to meet God, I know that. But are you ready to do God's will? Do you stay connected with Him through prayer? Do you have a prayer life or do you just come to Him um, when you're in trouble? Or when somebody's hurting? Or when you have an urgent need? Do you have a prayer life? Do you listen to him when you pray? Do you know how to listen to this still, small voice? A lot of people, they come to the Lord and they, and they have a list. Lord, I want you to do this and this and this and this person needs healing. Rattle, rattle all those things off. And okay, Lord, see ya. But you have to give God some time to respond and listen. Quiet your spirit and see if he has something People, you know, Pentecostal, you're like, God told me this, God, and they think we're nuts, but what is, he's given you an impression in the still small voice in your spirit, and that's the answer, and sometimes it's, a, it's an impression of what he wants you to do. It's not always, sometimes there's an audible voice, but that's what we're talking about. God, when we pray, give God, if you, if you went to somebody's house or sat down with somebody and, and monopolized the conversation but didn't give the person a chance to say anything and then leave, well, that would just be rude. <laughs> but we do that to God. Prayer should be a two-way. It should be a two-way. Just give God and just open your spirit and just listen. And when you hear something... It has, to, it has to go the way, of the, the Spirit always goes the way of the Word. If what you're hearing isn't, it doesn't line up with God's Word, then it's not from God, it's another Spirit. Do you stay in the Word? God speaks to us through His Word. And are you ready then to speak the Word into somebody's life? People are in darkness, people you know, people you know, friends, family. I asked, I guess it was last week, for people to come down here if they had unsaved loved ones, and I mean, we were just all the way across here praying. So we all have those. But are you ready to speak the word into somebody's life? They're in the dark when you have the light. It's like if somebody's stumbling around in the dark and you have a flashlight, but you don't illuminate their path. You wouldn't do that. Well, that's what's happening in spiritually. Are you committed to shine that light of truth on the path of their life? You know, every now and then, we need to come before God and renew our commitment to Him. We have, to, we have to come to him and say, Lord, show us before it's too late for somebody. That would, be, that would be a regrettable thing if you had an opportunity to speak life into somebody, to speak a word, to lead someone to the Lord, and then they were lost after that for eternity. That would be a regrettable thing. It would for me. Would you stand with me? So let's, let's do this this morning. Let's come before God and renew our commitment 
to do things before it's too late, to be aware of what God wants us to do, to be listening when he speaks to us in the still small voice, and to be ready to do things. You know, I've had people will call me and say, would you go visit my uncle? One of them was an uncle, one of them was a husband. One of them was just a friend, and they died. And if I'd have said, I'm too busy, I can't do that now. Would have been too late. I led them to the Lord. I preached their funeral services. And I was satisfied because I did what God wanted me to do before it was too late. If you want to make a commitment to God to do things before it's too late, to speak before it's too late, to not speak because it might be too late, but to, but to be aware in the word and in prayer and to be able to do that, to bring the life, the light into somebody's life. Let's find a place to pray. Let's spend a few minutes in prayer just asking God to give us that kind of a powerful, you know, if you speak, if you, if you get somebody, you can come down, you can stand, kneel, sit, pray, it doesn't matter. But if you're, you know, if you're willing to do that, God will bring those opportunities to you. We just have to be ready. We just have to ask God to help us to be ready with the word and to just do it before it's too late. Amen.